Hello, everyone, and welcome back in. Well, we're on episode number two of the FJ43 hardtop version, the SUV version. Just to get started, a little bit of housekeeping here. After the episode number one, I was let know by folks who actually drove these SUVs, had them back in the day. Well, apparently the rooftop here is not metal and would not have had a wear pattern like this. Matter of fact, this is the rooftop is made from fiberglass, thus... All of this nice work of sanding it out and trying to get this beautiful wear pattern, well, that was really um, uh, in error. Let's put it that way. It's not consistent with reality. So, in terms of housekeeping, as I said in the last video, it's going to be easier to take things off than put things on. But in this case, we're going to put things back on. So, real quickly here, just to get things out of the way, go ahead and do a quick repaint here. The colors using are exactly the same as the original color. This would be white gray from AK Real Color. And just spraying that over the top of all that wonderful work we did. Yeah, my fancy masking there using a paper towel just to keep the overspray off the rest of the model. Yeah, I'm pretty careful with the way I work, obviously. Once I had the coverage over the old work, it's time just to weather it up just a little bit here. I wanted, you know, it looked a little bit too white, too pristine, so... Just returning back to the oil paints here, just ever so quickly, just a nice quick wash, just to tone down the colors and add a bit of um, dirt and dusty types of uh, appearance to the rooftop here. And so now with that out of the way, we can go ahead and continue on with the painting of this model. Now, I mentioned in the first episode that I wanted to try to push the colors, the acrylic colors, as far as I possibly could in terms of the weathering on this model. I, I am using retarder, so there's a little bit of retarder on that, and I'm mixing those in with the acrylic colors right now. And my palette is fairly limited. Uh, the two gray and blue colors very closely match the AK Real colors, which are the base colors. Of course, I have a white gray, which matches as well, and I'll be using that to lighten the colors. And then for the dirt tones, I have that brown and yellow color. Let's start about adding acrylic colors in terms of weathering. Weathering using acrylics is a little bit different. It's the same, but different. Let's see if we can follow along here. First off, I am, again, using retarder, so I have a longer drying time. The second thing that I am doing, or purposely trying to do here, is actually paint on the effects. In some cases, you'll see some larger washes and things like that just to kind of put things together. The washes would be more in the terms of a glaze, let's say. But for the most part, I'm being fairly precise as to where the color is and adding literally individual splatters, individual marks here and there. Uh, the shading, the weathering, that kind of stuff is all being done very purposeful. Um, more in tuned, I guess, maybe with figure painting? I'm not sure. Of course, working in small areas is also key to this. Even with the retarder, you always have to be mindful of those tide marks. So just work in small areas, work somewhat quickly. Um, and again, that kind of ties back to the small areas. Just work on places where you think you can get the job done before you have the paint dried or those dreaded tide marks that are so difficult to get rid of. Well, if the quick drying time of acrylics is its downfall, it's also its benefit because with that quick drying time, you could really work through a model very, very quickly. Even with the retarder, everything is dried within seconds. Well, you know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that. And you're able to add layer upon layer and just keep moving on. So far, everything's still in pieces. Nothing's been completed, but it's about time that I assemble the model in whole want to take care and treat these window pieces. The gauzy works really good. It gives a nice glass appearance to the plastic part. So just a dip and a dry in that solution. This is that moment in time where I get to say thank you to my Patreon. Thank you guys. If you enjoy this channel and would like to support it further, please consider joining Patreon. The link is in the description below. These members help make these videos a reality. In appreciation of your support, I offer Patreon-only videos, photographs of these projects ongoing, final photographs. We have a Discord server for chats. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Well, I don't know about your cars, but my cars have dirty windshields. So I'll use the airbrush here not only to give a light spray onto the glass areas so I can give that dirt simulation, but also unifies a bit of the weathering I did earlier. So some dusty tones kind of blend everything together. Now it's back to using the brush and the acrylics once again and just continue to add layers of effects. Adding some shadowing here around the windows on the glass as well and weathering the glass 
parts as well. And then you can add the dust streaks, the rain marks, again, some shadowing here along these, these lines. Just continue on very much the same pattern as you would if you were using, say, oils or enamels for your weathering. As much as I want to try to move those acrylics as far as I can, I get to this point where I just, there just needs a little bit of, of something extra and the oils will take care of that for me. Basically, the something extra is just a little bit of depth. Um, acrylics, I always feel like tend to, it's hard to explain, sit on top of the surface and the oils just give some depth to, to all those colors and textures. Again, I'm going to go very sparingly here, mostly just to add what would be the pin washes or a little bit of shading around some of the surface details. So here we are around the, the driver's door, for instance, and then around the windows and some of those fuel caps and things like that. And just to really emphasize those features and, like I said, give them a little bit more definition. And then in certain other areas, I'll go ahead and use the blues and the gray colors that match the base color and just apply those. And what this does is it kind of adds the effect of maybe somebody brushed up against this door. This door's not quite as dirty as, say, some other parts. So it gives the illusion of clean and dirty because you're basically just overriding some of the acrylic colors there, just bringing out, again, some of the base color to the forefront. Now, while I've used the oil paints like I do in most of my projects, I think it's fairly noticeable. I hope, hope it is. It sure feels this way to me that I've used them in a much more limited, limited manner, limited scope here. So just for effect rather than oils in terms of overall weathering. And with the combination of pushing the acrylics forward and the oils back, I'm really enjoying this balance. Uh, so I think it's, it's a technique that I'm going to try to explore a little bit more going forward with some of my other projects here just to try to, I don't know, change it up a little bit. Of course, now we have our spinning SUVs, which means that this part of the construction is complete. So we've, we've basically got our weathering done. I might add a little bit more here or there. Of course, the roof still reflects the old roof before the repaint, but let's move on to, yep, you guessed it. Let's make a diorama base for our model. So the basic premise here, the basic scene, the idea for the scene is that this SUV and this fellow that I'll have working with him. Yes, there will be a figure. They're doing some exploration. They're doing an expedition up some mountain track. And once they get up to this certain area, it's either the end of the road just because it's the top of the mountain or it's been a washout. I'm going to kind of reflect more of a washout, but we're going to be on the side of a mountain here. So I'm going to make it a steep mountainscape here using my foam, my favorite pink foam. Cut a lot of this out using my foam cutter. And just adding a little bit of definition here, the first level of textures, carving those into some of these, what will be the rock facing.
Well, speaking of textures, let's add some more here. There's my blue bowl of good stuff, and inside there are a lot of wood chips. So I'll just be using some of those to add, again, another layer of, well, texture. How many times can I say texture? Like quite a few. But that's the key to making bases for your models is just add a lot of texture. Groundwork is just, it's so key just it gives a lot of life and personality and options later on because a lot of this will all be painted out. You can make rocks, you can make boulders, you can make dirt, you can make whatever. Adding to the scene, one of my favorite other components other than bark is plaster. Again, I usually just roll out sheets of plaster, break it up, and these will become rocks and outcroppings and some of the clutter at the base of this of this slope here. Whoops, bottle back into place. And just, again, adding more and more layers of, yep, here's the key word. This should be a drinking game, eh? Textures. And then finally over top, yep, you guessed it. One more time, I'm gonna go ahead and use plaster here because it will just be able to coat over everything and unify the surfaces. And you might be thinking, well, gosh, Rick, you're just covering up all that work you just did. Nope. This shrinks down and dries around all these different areas here. So all this different, all these different items that we've added, all these different, yep, here it goes again, textures will still be visible and even prominent once this all dries. Which once again brings us to kind of a stopping spot here because I need to let this dry before I can really continue and move on. If you've enjoyed this episode, I do encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you enjoy this channel and would like to support it further, I do have that Patreon page I'd like to see over there and would enjoy your support. In the upcoming episode, which will be the final episode, we'll continue on with this base. And then, like I said, I do have a figure that we will be painting out as well. Pull everything together, and then we'll move on to the next project. So until the next episode, everyone, take care, happy modeling, and I'll see you soon.